Welcome to Fear No Evil, where the evil I speak about is child sexual abuse, where Psalms 23 is my foundational scripture, and where the Lord Yeshua, also known as Jesus Christ, is my Lord and Savior at all times. Revelation states that we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. People think that Christians just come with scripture, but we don't. We also come with testimony. And so for me as a child, because child sexual abuse can land a child in such darkness, I often would look for the light, whether it be the sunlight, starlight, moonlight, God's son's light, the Holy Spirit's light, God himself's light. I relied on it daily to get through the darkness of child sexual abuse. And I don't feel that the others, child sexual abuse survivors, who do not believe in God, have any right to tell another sexual abuse survivor how to heal. And I would love to do actually a study because I bet those who aren't of the LGBT, but are child sexual abuse survivors, would never have the audacity to go to another child sexual abuse survivor and demand and force them to heal in a certain way. Last I knew, these people weren't there when I was being abused. There were only three people there, and one of them I didn't acknowledge. There was myself, the perpetrator, and Yahweh. Now people would say, well, why didn't he stop it? I'm not going to go into all the religious stuff. I can one day, but that's not the main focus of my point, and it's not the main focus of my videos. My main focus is another child sexual abuse survivor has no right to tell another child sexual abuse survivor how to, to survive and how to live after the abuse. And those who have never experienced it definitely don't have a right to be trying to force any other child sexual abuse survivor to heal in a specific way. Everyone finds their own way when they decide to heal and not every sexual abuse survivor decides to heal and not every sexual abuse survivor will heal depending on the damage that is done to them. I may not always think it's the correct thing to go to a therapist all the time. There are other mechanisms that you can use to heal, but I'm not going to tell somebody not to go see one. The only time I really advocate for a counselor or a therapist is if they are children because that's when you can reverse the damage that is done a lot easier. As we grow and become adults, PTSD can set in, mental illnesses can set in, denial can set in, repression can go in even, even deeper. There's lots of things that happen to a child sexual abuse survivor and the only ones who are healed are the ones who are talking. So I want to talk about defense mechanisms, and I'm glad that I'm finally into the subjects or the things, the issues that surround child sexual abuse survivors, because there's a lot that can be said for gaining an understanding of what it is and what it means to be a child sexual abuse survivor. It's not all about opposing the LGBT, but I had to get through some of that, and I'm glad that I'm done with the statistics because they are very daunting and very depressing, really. But nobody in America seems to care. We're just focused on racism right now while our children channels are running amok with suggestions of pedophilia and nobody cares. So I want to say with these defense mechanisms that we all rely on them and not just survivors of traumatic experiences and that they are creative and healthy ways of adapting and responding to one's environment. And they also are subconscious. They're, they're unconscious. Like when a child sexual abuse survivor or anybody is instilling one of these mechanisms, it's an unconscious mind's way of coming to the rescue for you when you perceive something or someone as an unbearable situation or a threat. And everyone responds differently to their environment and what may cause them fear personally. Even if two survivors living in the same environment, they will not respond to any abuse that they may both experience in the exact same way. And I know this because my sister and I were physically abused when we were younger. We do not respond to that physical abuse in the exact same way. We are very different in how it has affected us in our lives. The physical 
physical abuse for me that I suffered from my stepmother did not have a big effect on me in life. I guess it's because I got sexually abused later and for many years and that took its toll and actually overran anything that the physical abuse could have ever done. I healed from the physical abuse and I didn't like my stepmother anyways. And so the fact that she was abusive, it's not like it crushed me. And I was able actually to get past being physically abused very, very easily. Now, sexual abuse was another story. And that I responded in my environment, although I was in the same environment as my sister, in a totally different way. So I can see how two brothers or two sisters or a brother and sister can be in the same household, get sexually abused. One can be homosexual and one not. Why? Because they perceived their environment differently. And I'm talking about identical twins who are supposed to have the exact identical DNA. DNA. If one is coming out homosexual and the other one is not, could it possibly be that they responded to their environment in a different way? Now, Sigmund Freud, I call him Sigmund Fraud, I don't like the psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever he is. And the fact that psychology has based a lot of things around this man, do they ever tell people that he discounted the child sexual abuse survivors who were women? He did not believe them. He did not include any of their stuff in his studies. So I don't know why psychiatry even relies on him. I do not. I don't like the man. Or his, I don't know the man, so I can't say I don't like the man. I don't like his work for that reason. But thank goodness he had a daughter named Anna. Now, I have to wonder now if Anna was a survivor of sexual abuse because she is the one who is credited for beginning the work on defense mechanisms. Our defense mechanisms serve as buffers for the ego. And in general, we all use defense mechanisms because they are there to help us absorb the shocks received in life because life is shocking. There are a lot of things that can happen to it it happened to you in life that you're unprepared for, that you think will never happen to you. And child sexual abuse is something that no child ever thinks is going to happen to them. They don't even understand what's going on when it is happening to them. Now, there is a downside to the coping mechanisms because they can also be the result of behavioral and personality distortions that can manifest as a result of these reflective responses to traumatic experiences. Defense mechanisms are active and essential for the child sexual abuse survivor, although everyone uses them as a way to cope. It is very important for people to understand that these defense mechanisms, which are, which are dissociation, repression, and denial, these are active and they are essential for the child sexual abuse survivor. Although everyone uses them as a way to cope, child sexual abuse survivors also must use them as a way to cope, also as a way to survive so that they can live. Now, I've done some work myself when it comes to the defense mechanisms. And I do have my own theory on it. But I guess I will go with Valiant because he argues he has identified a continuum of four levels of functioning and that specific defense mechanisms are prevalent at each level. For Valiant, it is an epigenetic process and uses Robert Wallerstein, Wallerstein's theories to lay a foundation for his own theories. Robert Wallerstein believed that in the, that in the development, the individual ascends an epigenetic ladder toward a more mature and reality, adequate mode of adaption. Each rung on the ladder represents a hierarchy of defenses appropriate for that developmental phase. The view there is a direction in the course of an individual's development over the life cycles are also referenced by theorists such as Maslow, Wilbur, Lovinger, Erickson. Also, Valiant disagreed that no one can identify particular stages. In order to live with the pain of ongoing abuse or a single incident of abuse, the survivor develops many defenses to protect the ego from the pain of the abuse. The pain is so intense, the child themselves are unable to process it. The three core defenses are memory repression, which is still up for debate, dissociation, and denial. All three defenses operate on a, an unconscious level way into adulthood. 
And that is why they can become dysfunctional. 